Hi there, my name is Athel, and these are my top five thoughts I had as I was reading He's Just Not That Into You, which was a really good book that came out a few years back. So let's just jump to it. Uh, thought number five. Uh, He's Just Not That Into You is a really, really strong premise. And it, it describes and really makes a really good description of why men in relationships do some of the things they do. And that description of he's just not that into you really explains a lot of what they do. However, uh, it's not an explanation of why he's not that much into her. And there's a sort of a default sense as in the book that women are these amazing creatures that men just want to be with. And if they don't want to be with um, this amazing creature, that there's something wrong with the guy. So there's the explanation of he's just not that into you is strong. There's just not a lot of analysis past that as to why it is that he's not particularly interested. Number four. There's only one tool in the book, which is to dump him and move on to somebody better. Um, and there's plenty of reasons that you should do that. I mean, if it's obvious that he is never going to marry you, it is obvious that he is having sex with somebody else. If it has gone a month and a half and he's not returning calls or anything, absolutely dump him, move on. Makes perfect sense. But there's also part of the book that's like, well, if there's you know some sort of short-term crankiness or he's a little bit of a jerk or isn't quite right or whatever that the only solution is to dump him and move on and i think that's a little bit of an overreaction at times yeah um, so it's the thing of you know when you're any when all you have is a hammer everything looks like a nail um, so i didn't quite like that so much number three and, and this is where the book is getting incredibly strong in that they do such a great job of trying to get the reader to stop paying attention to the words coming out of the guy's mouth and start really paying to the, the true story, which is the actions he's actually performing. So there's this thing he can say he loves you, wants to be around, wants a relationship, everything is great. But then if he is not calling, if he is being completely disrespectful or you know sleeping with someone else or well, whatever it is, then yeah, the true message is he's not that interested. He is not that into you. He's interested in somebody else or no one or whatever it is. So it's a really strong part of the book. And I very much like this. And often with people, I tell them to, uh, what, to you know, can you pass the silent movie test? Which is if your relationship was a silent movie, so the, the audience can't hear the talking, they can't hear the words. If, you're, if your life was a silent movie, would the audience know that your relationship was good? Would the audience know that your partner loved you and wanted you and was connective? Um, so the whole thing of words versus actions is huge. Which leads us into thought number two, which is that when the, the words and the actions are not aligning, a woman goes through this thing where they invent reasons and excuses that explain away the guy's lack of actions. And, I'm, and of course men do the same thing too. So one of the things I see a lot of is that most women don't really have much of a frame of reference to understand sexual rejection. I mean there's a sense of if they are offering the sex that they will be accepted on that 100% of the time. Guys are different. Guys sort of view getting sex sort of like a, a, you know, a baseball hit rate. If they're getting it 30% of the time they ask, they're pretty damn happy. That most women don't have this. And I've seen women get either, when they feel rejected, get very, very angry at the men and it turns into something quite insulting. And you know, they say he's gay or not a man or he's a weak or he's a loser or alternatively they turn it inwards on themselves and they act like and feel like they are the most ugly woman who has ever been put on the earth. I really, one of the things I really liked about this book was it really got through to me that before they get to that place, there is a period of just denial and excuse making. Like, oh, he didn't call because maybe he's trapped in traffic for four weeks. 
that that sort of bobble of disbelief and denial um, I hadn't really picked up on just how deep that can go. So this was something in the book that really jumped out at me and I, I appreciate it a huge amount. And thought number one, and this is a phrase in the book, it was almost like a throwaway line a couple of times, but it has really, really stuck in my head and that is don't waste the pretty. Um, and if you're a guy, don't waste your value. Um, you see, often at the start, and I, and I see this over and over again, is that at the start of the relationship, when you're first getting together, when you're first connecting, and you have that rush of passion and emotion, the start of the relationship is so often the high water mark for sexual interest and baseline attraction. And as the relationship unfolds, you can have periods where the relationship has high attraction and less so, and it's a sort of ebb and flow up and down. And when I see a relationship that's really struggling, it's actually really important to me to know it. You know, at the beginning, there was this high level of sexual interest and attraction, because that says to me that there's something that you can get back to. There is something you can do well, you can say, well, what, what were you doing at the start of a relationship? What was creating the attraction then? And you can replicate it. So when I see a couple that had high, high attraction at the beginning, there's always something to get back to. But if at the beginning, they just weren't that into you, they weren't really turned on, they weren't really excited, that is a huge, huge red flag. And that may just spell you know, an endless rolling decades long disaster of never getting what you want from that relationship. And that's really what's behind, you know, the, the, the line of don't waste the pretty. Um, as I said at the beginning, well, maybe there are things you could do that would make you more or less attractive. Um, but if you're going to invest in a relationship in someone, you want to know that at least at the beginning, they had a high level of interest in you. Otherwise, what can you get back to when you know the relationship comes a little harder or life throws a curveball at you? Um, so the whole thing of don't waste the pretty is so true. It is extremely vital that you internalize that. And, and it works the same for men and women. You know, if you have high value, don't waste it on someone that doesn't appreciate it and just isn't into you. So those were my top five thoughts. The book is great. Go take a peek at it. And until next time, my name is Athel, and link, share, subscribe, comment, and all that good internet stuff. And I will catch you next time.